So for the muscle contraction, you need calcium. For the muscle relaxation, you need to move the calcium away and also move the actinomyosin binding structure. So for the muscle relaxation, you need ATP. And ATP is move the calcium back and also uh, cause the detachment of the actinomyosin. So for the muscle to work properly, you need calcium and you also need ATP. And the signal to end muscle contraction come from neuron. So the neuron, motor neuron, touch the muscle fiber. They can touch uh, two, three, or they can touch two hundreds. So each motor neuron plus the muscle fiber, that neuron innovate. Innovate means the, 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 the neuron touch. And we call the motor unit. So you can have a small motor unit, you can have a big motor unit. And small motor unit usually they are good for fine, complicated movement like your finger, your face muscle. They have a lot of small motor unit, and the big motor unit they have a lot of fiber. They are good for producing a big power like your leg muscle, your body muscle. They are big motor unit. Okay, let's look at the other kind of muscles. Cardiac muscle. That's the one you find in the heart, and they. Uh, glued together through the intercollected disc. They have a long contracting time and they, are, they don't need any signal to ask them to contract. The signal comes from the pacemaker cells which is in the heart, in the right atrium. So the, the self-exciting. And they don't have tendonic contraction. Tendonous is a big word to say the muscle cramp. So the heart muscle is more advanced the muscle. You won't have heart muscle cramp. It's a protective mechanism. And that's how the heart muscle look like. They branch, they branch. They still have the uh, light, dark patterns, striated patterns. So this tell you their fiber organized pretty well. They can produce a big power. And they glue together through the intercollected disc. The third one, the smooth muscle. Smooth muscle, you find it in the, all the inner organ except the heart. Uh, they don't need to produce a big power. They still use the actin and myosin, but they don't need them to organize pretty well to produce the big power. So under the microscope, they actually look like a cell. That's how they look like. They look like a cell. They don't look like uh, they don't look like a muscle. Okay, so that's the uh, what's the motor unit. That's the muscle fiber connect with all the fiber. They innovate. You can have a big motor unit. They are ready to produce a big power. You can have a small motor unit. They are good for uh, fine tuning control. Now let's look at the gross anatomy of the muscle. So basically you need to learn the muscle's name and be able to identify those muscles. So that's the front view and that's the posterior view. And muscle attached to bones. So they, they have the origin and insertion. So the origin is the, the area they touch. So your origin are the one closer to the body. So they are the one move less. Insertion is more distal. So insertion is the one they move more. And action, that's the activity. That's the movement they create. So let's look at different body parts. So this is uh, overlap with your second lab, the gross anatomy of the muscle. So in the head, we're going to look at these muscles. And let's look at the picture. So frontal legs, this one in your forehead, your frown, there's this muscle. You have two apicularis, one surround the eye. So there's the apicularis oculi. And the second one surround your mouth, there's the apicularis oris. Temporal radius, there's the muscle in your, uh, in your temporal bone, uh, outside of your temporal bone. Let's look at this one. Masseter. Masseter is the muscle for chewing. This is zygomatic bone. So it connects the zygomatic bone to the uh, mandible. So when you chew, that's the muscle. Now let's look at this one. This one is called the sternocleidomastoid. It's a super long name, but the name tells you their origin and insertion. It starts from the sternum and clavicle. It connects to the mastoid process of your temporal bone. So this is a huge muscle support your neck. When you're able to move your neck, that's this muscle, sternocleidomastoid. 
So the muscle in the neck, we talk about most of them. In the anterior part, these two big muscles, that's a sternocleidomastoid. Let's look at the posterior. Posterior, the muscle to move your head is called the trapdeus. Trapdeus is a big muscle, so it will support the posterior part of your head and also go all the way down to your shoulder and your spine. Now this in the body area. So these muscles usually they're for breathing. Like one is a diaphragm, that's the inside. We'll see the diaphragm in the next slides. And you also see the uh, rectus abdominis. That's a muscle you're very familiar with. We call it six packs. It's actually eight packs. Uh, its official name is rectus abdominis. And in this part, you have the oblique muscle. So muscle have layers. You have internal oblique, external oblique. So inside layer is internal oblique. And outside is external oblique. External oblique go uh, to the center. That's the, how the, the fascicle organized. And this muscle is the diaphragm. So it separates your thoracic cage away from your abdominal pelvic cavity. And it's mainly for breathing. And the muscle between the ribs, we call the intercostal muscle. So you have the internal intercostal muscle, external intercostal muscle. Uh, muscle have layers. So between your labs, there's the intercostal muscle between your ribs. And this muscle called serratus anterior. Now we reach the articular muscle. So in your arm, your leg, we're going to look at this muscle. So in your textbook, you have very good picture. So usually they show you two sides because muscle have layers. One side is the outside layer, and then they're going to peel this away. You look at the inside layer. Posterior view, let's look at this one called trapdeus. This is the big muscle. Support your head and also go all the way to your shoulder, to your spine. This one, deltoid, that's the muscle outside of your shoulder. And when you take the flu shot, that's the deltoid. And inside part, you have the teres major. Teres major is the one you can feel it if you have a very nice body. Uh, but teres minor, teres minor is too small, so you won't be able to feel it. It's in the inner layer muscle. Another inner layer muscle called infraspinatus, and that's the muscle surround the scapula. We will talk about infraspinatus, infraspinatus and teres minor later. They belong to a, a group of muscle, we call them rotating cuff muscle. And this one called the rhomboid, it connects the scapula to the to the vertebrae column. And this one you are very familiar with. This is called the triceps bronchii. Now let's look at the anterior view. So anterior view, you have the uh, pectoral radius major, deltoid, biceps bronchii. And this one called the sub subscapularis. And this this also the inner layer of muscles uh, connect the scapula to the humerus. So it's part of the rotating calf muscle. So outside layers, but the seamus dorsi, there's a big layer of muscle in your back. And inside you see the supraspinatus, infraspinatus, teres minor. So one, two, three, previous slides, subscapularis. These four muscles is called the rotating calf muscle. It's called the S I T as cis muscle. And their function is the supraspinatus is the abductor arm, the soup abductor arm, and the other three rotate the arm. So they are the inner layer of muscle that surround the scapula to the humerus. And their job is, is to rotate the arm. So they are called the rotating calf muscle. Sometimes the athletes can damage those muscle. Muscle have layers and smaller one usually they are the one got damaged. So they show you the shoulder and those muscles. Okay, now we reach the elbow and you have the bronchialis and you have the bronchii. Now we're in the wrist and wrist you have a lot of flexor and extensor. And these muscles, they move your, move your finger, move your wrist.
So flexor in the anterior part, extensor are yeah, usually in the posterior part. So these are the flexor and the extensor. So when we reach the hand, there are small muscles and they have layers. Now let's reach the pelvic area. The pelvic, you have the thigh muscle, you have the leg muscle. So let's look at these muscles. So first you see the gluteus maximus, that's a big muscle in your uh, pelvic joint. And in your knee part, you have the quadriceps muscle. You have one rectus, three vestus. Okay, let's look at the leg. So that's the gluteus maximus. And now let's look at the anterior view. We talk about the quadriceps muscle, the rectus femoris and vestus medialis lateralis and the one being blocked by this is intermedialis and this is a long muscle this is actually longest muscle called sartorius now the posterior view posterior view we talk about the gluteus maximus and let's look at this two this is called the biceps femoris so your body you actually have two biceps biceps bronchii and biceps femoris and this one is called the semitendinosus. These two, they are very similar. And biceps femoris is lateral, semitendinosus is medial. And this one is called the semimembranosus. So these muscles, we call them uh, hamstring muscle. So the anterior view, you have the quadriceps muscles. Posterior view, you have the hamstring muscles. Now we reach the leg. Uh, let's look at the one called gastrocnemius. And the gastrocnemius is the thigh muscle. It connects with the calcaneus through the calcaneal tendon. And calcaneal tendon also have a nickname called Achilles tendon. It's a very famous tendon. And this is the other muscles from the side view. Okay, that's it.